Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to try to make an entryway hall tree with a live edge slab bench. Boy, that's a mouthful. Uh, don't have any plans, just going to wing it. Never made one of these things before. So it's a long video. Let's get into it. All right. Well, the first thing I need to do is come up with some sort of a plan. Even though I don't have any exact build plans for this, um, we are going to be winging it. So here we're going to cut up a little bit of plywood. Uh, these are going to be for the cubby boxes. Just going to use the old track saw. Cut up some strips here on the table saw. Get all the parts cut to size. And I usually like to label all of my parts once I have them cut. That way I know what piece goes where and sometimes I'll even measure the piece and write the dimensions on the tape also more parts to label So here I'm going to start the old pocket hole journey. I'm going to use pocket holes to assemble the cubby carcasses. I thought this would probably be the easiest way to put this together since it's just a simple little box. And that's a Craig 720 that I made a makeshift little uh, platform on there so that when you put the piece in, you can put a longer piece in so that it keeps it all straight. A little bit of glue up here. So what I did was I clamped a piece of scrap wood under the back of my table so that I could push those pieces against it so when I was putting those pocket hole screws in though, the wood wouldn't slide away on me. So I can get a nice tight joint. And here I have a triangle clamped to my piece so that I keep it at 90 degrees because I didn't have um, anything that I could keep that piece vertical. Seemed to work out okay. Of course applying glue when, when the piece is on its side like that isn't the easiest thing either without making a huge mess. And that little Craig clamp really does come in handy when you're doing these corner pieces. And using the track saw, cut a few more pieces. It wasn't the best camera angle. Um, that I was actually cutting the back main piece uh, for the whole unit. And right now all I'm doing is just using a little bit of sandpaper and just kind of take off the sharp edge any splinters or anything like that and let's load those cubby boxes 
if these don't have the face frame in them yet, um, they'll, they'll need a face frame, which will make it a little bit. But here I'm just sanding that down, just not really, really sanding it, but just taking that sharp edge off and pinning those splinters. Don't forget to keep a nice, tidy little work area. Here I'm using my patented finger glue spreader. It seemed to work out okay. I would I applied the glue kind of on my finger and then used my finger to spread it. So when it was in the vertical like that, it would stick to the actual wood. Otherwise, it would just drip right down. So I have pocket holes on the inside of the cubby. Um, so right now what you're seeing is the bottom. But on the inside I have um, pocket hole screws. And the intent was to plug those and then sand them down so that you wouldn't see them. I'm going to leave the inside of this unit the natural wood color. And I'm going to paint the outside of it white. So I'll fill those little plug holes with the um, pocket hole plugs and just sand those down flush so, so you won't really see them. So this unit ends up being about 80 inches tall, which is pretty good size. Uh, unless you're really, really looking for those plugs, you probably won't see them. It was a little difficult getting in there. Uh, at some point I had to switch over to the small little Craig um, bit so that I could get the drill inside of there get all those pocket holes screwed in. And here what I realized was I forgot to add some pocket holes on that one side. So I, I put the glue on there and I just used some clamps to clamp it down. Now we're going to switch our attention to the bench seat which is going to be a uh, live edge slab that I'm working with here. It's about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, somewhere around there. But it's uh, cottonwood. And here what I'm showing you is that my slab is a little small. It doesn't quite fit the area that I need. Um, I need a few more inches in there so that I can have the proper overhang on the front. So what I'm going to do is, my cottonwood slab was like 10 feet long, so I'm going to cut off a portion of it and I'm going to glue it onto the back and you won't even see it. Like I said, don't really have a plan, just kind of winging it. These are the pieces for the face frame, and I'm using just some regular one by material. Um, I think it's pine. This little locking stop that I embedded into the workbench has been great. Gives me some really nice repeatable cuts. Fortunately for me, I have eight feet on each side of the saw blade, so I can put a full long piece down there. And here's our bench top, doing a little bit of sanding on it. It was really rough, so I thought I would sand it first before I got into repairing all the little cracks and holes and all that stuff. So here what I'm doing is um, I'm putting the trim pieces onto the face of the halt tree. Um, just doing a little bit of gluing. I'll clamp it up and then I'll go back around with my brad nail and nail it on. I think the glue in the nails will be just fine. Which 
try to wipe off some of that glue so um, when I go to paint it doesn't look too crappy. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do here, crawling up onto the workbench. Uh, I've got a small shop, so you know, don't have room to set this whole thing up there. So I crawled up onto the workbench and decided to do the work up there. Applying more of those trim pieces. I'm trying to clean up the glue squeeze out as I go along. Not the best camera angle there, sorry. <laughs> to walk around the piece and hit it from different sides just depending on where I can reach. Maybe one day we'll get a bigger shot. So here we're putting the face frame on and I've got the bench slab clamped on there so that I can make sure that that base frame sits right against that bottom edge of the um, bench seat. Right now it's just sitting in there, it's not permanently attached. Now I'll go back later and fill in all those nail holes before I paint. So there's the oversized bench, I still haven't trimmed that down yet. And I filled in those holes, the nail holes, on the face frame. So I'm just kind of giving that a light sanding. I had to do a lot of pushing and pulling on that piece just so that I could get around there and reach all the places that I needed to reach. The joys of a small shop. Now I'm just going to clean up some of those edges um, where the face frame overhung a little bit on the plywood and then it just kind of clean up all those little edges so that I can get ready to paint, sand off any glue squeeze out that I missed, just give it a nice edge. So here I'm getting ready to fill in all the cracks and the voids and um, things here on our bench top. And this is the bottom of the piece and it had quite a few cracks in it that went all the way through so um, 
I'm going to pour some epoxy in there to fill in those voids so I didn't want it to spill out all over and waste all that epoxy because it's like gold. A little bit of uh, blue painter tape does a trick every time. I didn't sand that live edge too much. I wanted to leave a lot of that on there just for the character. I figured I would just epoxy over top of it and it should be okay. There's no bark or anything on it. It's just uh, just like a little discoloration or the wood, um, the dirt there that was left under the bark. That looked really cool. So here we're putting on some primer. It took forever to prime and paint this piece. I didn't realize just how big it was. I should have used my paint sprayer, but I decided I would just use a paintbrush. ended up putting on two coats of uh, paint and then I went through and caulked everything up just to seal everything, make sure all the cracks and everything were all covered up. I did give it a light sanding after I put the primer on, just kind of bust. break down that, that primer a little bit, make it smooth. And here I'm going to stain this top. The client wanted it really dark, um, and this cottonwood was a light wood, obviously, so I used a little bit of uh, walnut stain. It actually turned out okay. I really don't like staining wood, but that is what the client wanted. What I did was I applied the stain on there and then went back with a rag after and wiped off all the excess. That ingrain really took that stain, got really dark on the ingrain, and then it ended up matching that front live edge, so it worked out okay. I was a little worried at first. Now I only stained around the edge of the bottom of it, just because it is going to overhang a little bit. So just in case you looked from the bottom up, which you probably shouldn't be, but if you did, it would still have that same dark color wood all the way around. But I didn't stain the whole bottom of it. So we're getting ready to put on some epoxy. I ended up doing three coats of epoxy on this. And I think I lost some of the video of me putting this epoxy on. But basically I just laid it out onto the table. I shimmed it up, made sure that it was nice and level. And then I used this two-part epoxy. It's kind of got a self-leveling -level property to it. So you can put it on and it will level itself out. And it's a equal part, one-to-one -one mix. And I was trying this thing that I saw on YouTube where a guy put a popsicle stick inside of his drill and it didn't quite work that good. <laughs> so I went back to doing it by hand. I'm not coloring this at all. This is just a clear coat. Um, and I, basically all I want to do is just fill in 
top of that um, slab is a little rough. Some of the grain is really thick and so I just want to smooth it out. So here I'm using my patented hand spreader and uh, I found that instead of using a scraper and all that, just using your hands and moving it around with your hand allows you to feel where it needs to go. You can add more or uh, you know less depending on how the wood dictates where it needs to go. And so I had some cracks in there that I thought I had filled in pretty good, but come to find out I didn't and it just seemed to be, I don't even know where it was going. I poured it into the crack and it would go down into the wood and disappear and I looked at the bottom, it wasn't coming through the bottom, so I would assume that that crack went through that whole piece. So I filled in as much as I could. I think the end result had one little small crack that was still visible where that epoxy just couldn't fill it. The crack was just too big. Here I'm using heat gun just kind of take out some of the bubbles. So this is the after the first coat. So you can see it's a little rough. Um, so I ended up sanding in between those coats and all the way up to like a 220 I think it was. But um, that's after the first coat. And I lost the video footage of all the other applications and the sanding and all that, but who, who really wants to watch sanding anyway? So here's the piece upright, and here's the piece installed. Turned out okay.